Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for a Quick Tip Thursday webinar. It's going to be about 10 minutes of a session and then a 5 minute Q&A session. Today's topic is tonality control in black and white effects. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right, we're going to be taking a look at several images today, and we're going to be taking a look at all of the different tone controls within black and white effects based on tonality, not necessarily looking at the color overlay tones or the color tones that you can put into your images, but more of the 0 to 255 traditional tone scale tools. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. Let me show you this before and after. Here is before, after. This image looks completely different when taken into black and white effects than this after. So let's just start with this image. And I'm just going to jump in. So as you saw, I just put reset all just to show you this is a neutral grayscale. And we're going to be looking at several tools within the conversion tab with the basic exposure, the adaptive exposure, the color sensitivity, and the color filter. And we're really going to leave the rest of this alone. We might hit a couple things, but not much. So let's go ahead and get right on in. Most people will start off with a preset. So my traditional collection, perhaps my classic preset to start off with and then move on from there. But I'm not going to do that today. I want to start from scratch and show you exactly what each tool does and what it's there for. So within the conversion tab, which is the first step of the black and white effects workflow, we have our basic exposure. And when you open that up, you'll see all of the different sliders below. Now contrast and brightness are pretty standard. Um, contrast and brightness controls. So I think everybody pretty much understands that. I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast and leave my brightness alone for now. What I do want you to know about these more advanced contrast control tools, the boost blacks and the boost whites. The boost blacks will just take your darker tones up or down without affecting your lighter tones. So you can come in here, let's say your whites are perfect, well, you can still come in and use your boost blacks and boost those blacks up just a little bit or even take them down, open them up. But I want to boost this up a bit. So when I'm doing this, I'm not affecting any of the lighter tones within my image. And that's where the boost whites come in. Boost whites can do the same thing. If you want to take it down, you can really start to protect the whites quite a bit or you can take it up and they'll start getting really bright. So I'm going to take it up just a little. And those are the first two sliders I really want you to know about the boost blacks and the boost whites. The next tone control area is the adaptive exposure. The adaptive exposure is really the unique algorithm that kind of got transferred from adjust that works on the exposure settings on a more localized way. And it allows for these really unique looks to take place, but it's also a corrective slider too. So I'm just going to click on the group because the default does some magic just on its own. So I just clicked it on with the check mark here. Here's before and here's after. But let's take this adaptive exposure and the regions down to zero to start fresh. Now if my regions are at one, Many of you who have attended the sessions before know that means that the program is looking at your image as one full image. As the region sliders go up, it's then looking at your image in several different sections depending on where your region slider is. But the adaptive exposure is the actual tool that's going to start exposing and trying to balance out your image. As you take this up, you'll notice it starts stretching those whites and blacks, and it's not very good for this particular image when my region is at 1. But as I move my region slider up, you'll notice that things start to balance out and things begin to even out, get adjusted on a much more localized basis, and I like that. I think it's a little much too strong for this particular setting, so we're going to take this down just a little bit. 
Okay, and I'm not going to worry about the Protect Highlight and Protect Shadows because I can do that in my basic exposure with a more advanced tool, I think, up there. The detail is looking pretty good. I'm just going to increase it because I when I really get the texture of that wood. Okay, now we're moving on to the color sensitivity. This is something that I believe if you have not played with in black and white effects, you need to come over here. It is so much fun. What it is is it adjusts the tone in your image based on what color that original color was. So for example, yellow. If I want to take these stairs and make them much lighter than they are right now, my original image, they're quite yellow, so I'm going to use that first. I'm just going to come to the yellow slider and move it up towards 1, and that's going to brighten it. If I moved it towards negative 1, it would darken it. But I'm going to brighten them. So that immediately just changes the entire feel of the image. Here's before and here's after. Now I have this red tile down here in the bottom and I really want to get that to be much darker. So I'm going to come to my red and I'm going to take it down. But just know that because these stairs are also a little bit red, it's going to affect the stairs too. So we'll have to play with them a little bit, but you notice the tile just got much darker. And so now I'm going to come back to my yellow and lighten up my stairs again. So I'm just playing around. I'm going to take my blues down just a little. There's some blues down in the tile. And then the green. I have the green of my posts, I think I want to darken those just a little bit, so I'll just take that down. All right, so I do want to go back up into my basic exposure and just take my boost blacks a little bit further get a little bit more contrast, and then we can go into our color filter. The color filter is very similar, or at least similar idea is that it's uh, based on the colors of your RGB image that you brought in, and you can put the color filter wherever you would like, and it will change your image significantly. This is simulating an actual color filter on your lens when you took the image, if you were working with a black and white film. So if we come down to, for example, red, it's going to take all of the red hue and make that bright, and it's going to take all of the blue and green and really start to take that down a notch. If I come over to my, my blue, it's going to take all of the red and really take it down. So once you kind of figure out these settings, it's a lot of fun to come in here and, and really play with it. So let's start from the very beginning. Here's where we brought our image in. This is our neutral grayscale. Then we did our basic exposure adjustments, our adaptive exposure adjustments, our color sensitivity, and our color filter to get a completely different image. And that's really what you really need to have advanced control over your tone in black and white imagery to get a really stunning image that has a lot of depth and has a lot of a lot of contrast and a lot of and it really brings you in with its tone alone not necessarily um, its subject matter hopefully the subject matter is good too but the tone alone can be so beautiful that you are drawn to the image more so than just your neutral grayscale so with that I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to you those are the four tone tools that I really wanted to get to today. We do have in our finishing touches, for example, a little bit of actual color tones, so silver and paper tone if I wanted to add in some warmth. I'm just checking that. That's the default. We also have a quad tone. I go over that significantly in the archived webinars, so definitely check that out. It's a very cool feature within black and white effects. And then we also have other things like our vignette and edge exposure that will change the tones of the edges. I am going to press OK, turn it over to you, and answer a few questions. Mark would like me to do several examples using portraits. I do not have a portrait up here right now. What I do have is something that does have skin. And I made sure to make the skin quite beautiful. I'll, I'll go over this really quickly, this workflow. Here's where we started out, and here's where we ended up. I'm going to come back to where we started out open it up real quick and tell you what happened when I took this in and I took it to my reset all. 
the flowers became very dark and the red flowers and I really wanted those to brighten up and get a little bit more detail in there so I immediately just came over to my conversion tools and my basic exposure and took my blacks just a little bit down took my contrast up and then came into my adaptive exposure where I knew it was really going to start to bring out some detail. Now I believe Mark what you're concerned with is when you go into your adaptive exposure and you start to see on portraits the skin will start to look a little rough. Now this is something that I noticed in this image as I was looking at the flowers and then I looked at the skin and I said wait a minute it's starting to do some things to the skin that I really don't like, but I like the detail on the flowers. For this particular image, because there was so much skin, what I did is I said process details independently, and in the back of my mind I knew I could locally add detail back into these flowers at a on my next step. So this process details independent is very important to know that you can take those details out. Again, here's before. Just keep an eye on the skin not the rest of the image and here's after it just smooths it back down to its original state and you still have some detail enhancements that you can put in so now when I was here let's just do this really quickly color sensitivity when it's my red lighten it up it lightened my skin up as well which was okay for this particular image and I was pretty happy here and then I wanted to see what happened with my color filter if I came on in and worked with it and my flowers got even more closer to the tone that I was looking for about maybe right there okay so here's well, maybe lighter <laughs> Okay, so now that I'm happy with all of this, I could then come into my local adjustments, go into my detail brush, and just brush my detail back into the flowers. So if you're concerned with getting the detail mark in certain areas of your image and trying to get it all with that adaptive exposure, you don't have to do that. You can come in here, and I'm going to put this pretty high so you can really see the details that start popping out. There are only certain areas of your image that you want detailed. Within black and white effects, this is a great tool. Not only burning, dodging, but smoothing, adding detail, and actually adding color back in is very simple. So here's before, here's after. I got the detail I wanted in the flowers, and my skin is now smooth. Add a little nice little warmth to it and say OK, and it's that easy. Uh, Steve says, do you find that denoise is a helpful secondary workflow step to offset any increase in noise added here, or, are there minimal, or is there minimal noise added? Steve, the noise is going to come from this one thing within the adaptive exposure, otherwise you don't have to worry about creating any noise, but denoise should always be used first. What will happen is this adaptive exposure technology will take any sort of noise that might be in your image at all and treat it like a detail. So it'll start to enhance the detail when you're going through this detail boost. Let me just show you. It will, as you see, just start to really recognize every single thing as detail. As you take this back down, you really don't see any noise. but if you go to 100% and you see any noise or you have a noisy image, then you definitely want to go and take that into denoise first to help with that. This adaptive exposure is there to create a certain look. So let's go to my stylize. It's a great corrective tool like I was just showing, but it's also something that can begin to give you the pseudo HDR grungy type of look. And again, the simplest way to kind of rid yourself of any noise that might be starting from that detail boost is to either take your detail boost down if it's still occurring, just press that process details independent of exposure, and you still get all of the adaptive technology and the adaptive look, but the detail itself has left the building. So 
that's one way to handle it. But use denoise first if you're using a noisy images. Dawn says adaptive exposure zones. If I use a large number of zones, how does that change the photo? Okay, Dawn. Well, I think you might have seen that with the other image, but we can take this one in as well. It's just the same as it is in Adjust. Let's go reset all, and this is all we'll use, the conversion adaptive exposure. We'll take that adaptive exposure down to zero and the regions down to one. As I take my adaptive exposure up, Let's go pretty high to about 0.5. It's affecting the whole entire image as one region. Now as I take my region slider up, it's going to start breaking up the image into several sections, and it's going to locally try to adjust that area. And so it's looking at just the tonalities within that one area, and it starts to give you this almost illustrative type of effect as you continue going really high with your regions and really high with your adaptive exposure. So it's all about what you're looking for. This is definitely very strong with the adaptive exposure and regions. And as you take your regions up and the adaptive exposure, you might start to see haloing in certain images. In this image, because there is so much detail, I don't see a lot of halos, but they are occurring in some images at this level. So that's the one thing you need to worry about going high with the regions. If you do see those halos, you can work with these two sliders going up and down or even processing the details independently to get rid of those halos. So I hope that helps. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me here today and have a great weekend.